world, to be on top of the world, like when we were kids, to be on top of the world again. Um, that's what we I would say when we were kids, because we were truly happy when we were little, you know, and no cares in the world, except for if there was milk in the refrigerator, if cartoons were playing. I just want to play with my friends and go outside. So I was on top of the world. Yeah, to be, um, um, everything's going right for you. That makes it really good. So you want to be on, you'll be on top of the world. Probably when all your friends come out of the woodworks too. Supposed friends. So anyways, go ahead, stop. Yes, great job. So this number eight to be on top of the world, yeah? That was a good example. So uh, what I can add about that one should be on top of the world. Yes, yeah, so this is when you're really, really happy. So let's say you got a new promotion. You can say, I'm on top of the world next day. Yes, to give someone the cold shoulder. So if someone is annoying you um, or threatening you or calling you names, you could just turn around and give them the cold sh shoulder. Um, or you turn the other cheek, you can say. Or um, sometimes you say give them the cold shoulders when you, you're the one actually being rude because they might be talking to you. And you turn around, give them the cold shoulder and just walked away. So it's not always about you're the yeah, you could be doing it and just being rude. Yeah. Yeah. So you to ignore someone when they're being rude or you're being rude and ignoring them. But yeah, to to give someone the cold short. Just give them the cold short. So go ahead. No. Could you say again? It's interesting what you thought. Oh, to give someone a cold shoulder about uh of someone like like on your picture there you got her just ignoring the ignoring him so it's giving him the cold shoulder or yeah turning the other cheek and that so yeah go ahead yes yeah, so the eject the the omen nine i mean the previous uh video yet huh? so to give someone the cold shoulder it's when you ignore someone and you ignore someone in, on purpose, usually because you're mad at them, annoyed with them, they did something wrong or something to irritate you. So let's say your husband or your wife is ignoring you. You might say, why are you giving me the cold shoulder? It's another way of asking, why are you mad at me? What did I do wrong? Why are you giving me the cold shoulder? Next. Number 10, oh, to sit on the fence, to hang it up. Um, I guess to hang it up is different. As you put it, to, to delay making a decision, to sit on the fence, to to make sure you're making the right decision, basically. Just just sit on the fence for a little bit. Make sure you're you're deciding that you're make you're going the right way on this on this decision. Um yeah, just just hang it up for a little bit. Um yeah. That's about all I got for that one. I don't use that one very much either. So go ahead. Yes, great. So to sit on the fence, the 10 already. On the fence. So this is when you delay making a decision, usually because that decision is difficult and you don't want to make it. For example, I asked my boss for a promotion, but he is sitting on the fence. So he won't answer me. He won't say yes. He won't say no. He keeps just saying, oh, I need to think about it. 
I will get back to you. He's sitting on the fence. Next. Number 11, to hit the nail on the head. Yeah, saw you knit, you hit the nail on the head on that last one. It was perfect. <laughs> to get something dead nuts or exactly. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, if you get something right or to nail it, we say you nailed it. You have a commercial. Nailed it. Um, that's that's <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, that's what it means. You nailed it. Perfect. Can you go ahead. So. Yes, great. So to be to hit the the nail on the head. Um. So um, that's one. It's eleven. No? So to hit the nail on the head. This is when you accurately explain a problem or a situation. For example, you hit the nail on the head when you said we ne needed to reduce our costs. So you explain the situation accurately. All right, so number 12, to be as fit as a fiddle. Yeah, to <laughs> strong fit. Something that we were when we were kids, and then as we get older, not so much. We start getting more fit as a piglet. <laughs> so fit as a fiddle, um, I don't know where they came up with that term, but um, maybe because of the shape of the fiddle. But yeah, just to be really fit, to be healthy, uh, that's what we'd say to somebody if they were healthy and fit. You're as fit as a fiddle. Or if uh, a business asks you, um, well, how's your health? And you'd be saying, fit as a fiddle. But I think doctors say it a lot to you. Well, you're fit as a fiddle. When you go into yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So, all right, go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. Uh -huh. So, 12, idiom 12, to be as fit as a fiddle. This simply means you feel great, you have a good healthy, you're in a good shape. So, you maybe, you could say, uh, since I changed my diet and I am eating more fruits and vegetables, I feel as fit as a fetal. 